Looking at the children of Israel, we pick up Simeon, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 24. Now the sons of Simeon were Nemuel, Jamin, Jerib, Zerah, and Shaul. Shalman his son, Misham his son, Mishma his son. The sons of Mishma, Hamio his son, Zachar his son, and Shimeo his son. And Shimeo had 16 sons and six daughters. But his brethren had not many children. Neither did all the family multiply like to the children of Judah. So the family looks like it died out. It came to a point that the last son has come and gone and left no other sons to keep the name on. And I've seen that in my own family. I'm not sure if as far as myself, Hayward, I mean, there's one possibility it can go on, but right now it looks bleak. And I've seen other uh, family in my own family. That's, their name is gone. A name is carried on by a son. And verse 27 saying is, the sons died out. And they that dwell in Beersheba. Now that's a city. It's in Judah. And when you look at the, the realm of Simeon, he's in Judah. Judah swallows him up. And so when you get the tribes of the south versus the tribes of the north, Simeon is in there. But it'll say the two tribes of Judah, there's actually three or four. Swallows up. And Molada, these are cities, and Hazar Shul, and Bilha. Look at that city. That's one of the maids of, I forget, Rachel or Leah. And the fact is that they named this city or town after her. In Ezra, and unto Tolad, and Bethuel, and at Horma. And Ziglag, that's David's land. That's where David went to the Philistine. He was given Ziglag and pertaineth unto the kings of David, which we're going to see in a moment. This is where God sent David when Saul would be killed in the battle with, with the uh, Philistine. This is where David's wives and his men's wives and their families and their animals were taken captive. Ziglag. And Beth, that's house, that's Jewish for house. Markavoth, Hazer, Psalm, Beth, Barariah, and Sharam. These were the cities unto the reign of David. So there's David, the Judean king of Israel. And their villages were against cities, Etam, and Aen, Rima, Tarkin, and Ashan by cities. All right, I said, now we're getting to the point where we're reading about people and we're reading about cities. That, that may be one of the confusions that you would have. Is it a city? Is it a person? Is it a person for what the city is named for? Or is it the city named for the person? And all their villages that were round about the same cities onto, well, look at that name. That's Baal. That's a false god. That's the god of the Canaanites of harvest. The sun god. And every city had their own national god. When uh, Paul is in Ephesus, great Diana. Diana was in charge. When you look at the major Rome cities, there was the city given to a god or goddess. Things haven't changed. These were their habitations and their genealogy. That's the first time that word shows up right there. Man, you would think by now, Genesis 5, Genesis 10, oh, Chronicles. And here's finally what the word shows. Numbers. you think numbers would have been the first place for genealogy. Mishobab, these are names of people. Jamlech, Joshua, the sons of Amaziah, and Joel. 
and Jehu, the sons of Josiah, the sons of Shariah, the son of Athiel, and Elaniah, and Jacoba, and Jeshadiah, Asahiah, and Adel, and Jezemiel, and Benaniah, Ziziah, the son of Shippai, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimrai, the son of Shimiah. These mentioned by their names were princes in their families, the royalty, and the house of their fathers increased greatly. Oh, here's a family. Boom, 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 boom. So we got in this one section of the same, we got one family died out. We got one family, boom. And they went to the entrance of Gedor city, even into the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. And you always got to find that bad. You got to find that water. You got to find that food for your flocks to stay alive. So they're on the move. When Jacob sent Joseph to go find his brethren or with the animal, and they went way, way, way far away because, you know, the grass was dying out. And they found fat pasture. And that don't mean the ground is fat. That means it's just loaded with nutrients and whatever that animal needs. Because uh, uh, cows will eat certain part and the sheep eat other parts. You can't have them graze together. I believe it's the sheep that will eat right down to the roots. And good. And the land was wide and quiet and peaceable. <laughs> That's what everybody's seeking for. This is the promised land. For there of Ham, Japheth's, I mean, uh, Japheth's brother, Noah's son, had dwelt there of old. So when Ham comes out of that ark, and he's given in a whole continent called Africa, while he reaches his way to Africa, he comes to this land that is quiet, peaceable, fat, good, great for crops, great for animals, and he stops and settles in there. This is God's land. It has always been God's land. And then Ham, he builds up his tribes, he builds up his gods, he builds up all the worship, he builds up into all the sex crimes. And when those cups get full, as Sodom and Gomorrah, God's like, okay, I'm going to send my people in there. And America is about full with, with her cup of judgment. I don't know how long it's going to be, and I don't know when. But every nation that's had that cup filled as Sodom and Gomorrah, once it starts overflowing, that's the wrath of God. That's the wrath of God. And what's the wrath of God for, for Ham? He sends, in the, he sends in the Jewish people. And they go in there, wipe them out, including the giants. Joshua goes in there. Jesus goes in there. And just starts wiping them out because of sin. And these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. Now we got a date. Remember Hezekiah? He was the good king. He's the one, hey, let's repair the temple. Let's put that chest with the hole. Let's take the money. Let's fix the temple. Here we are. We've already studied him. And smoke their tents. That would be the Hamites. And the inhabitants that were found. There. So they're just, hey, killing them. How wicked, how bad. Well, it's a lot better than what taking on their God, a lot better than taking on their ways, which they do. And destroyed them utterly unto this day and dwelt in their rooms, took over their houses, took over their buildings. Because there was no pastor there for their flock. I mean, for there was pastor there for their flocks. This is rich land. This is good for our cows. This is good for our goats. This is good for our sheep. This is good for all our animals. And the judgment upon the Hamites for their gods and their wickedness and their sins, you're out. Israel's in. Take their houses. Take their gardens. It's yours. God may do that to America if he tarries. You want to be wicked? You want to be vile? You want to do all the sins of the Canaanites? You want to do all the sins of Judah? You want to do all the sins of Israel? Which we are doing. Israel was taken to captivity. Judah is going to go into captivity. The Hamites are gone. 
And you think God's going to say, oh, because God bless America, I'm going to let them live? You're a fool. Because if God were to let America live with her sins, God would have to apologize to all these multitudes of people. And he's not going to apologize. He's a holy and righteous God. America is going to be fooled one day. Overnight, Babylon was destroyed. Daniel went in there and preached to the king. He told the king what God, what the word of God is. He had a special revelation by the handwriting on the wall. He said, your king is going to be destroyed next morning. Belshazzar never woke up. And the king and the Medes taking over. So this land is fat land. Remember what God, how he described this land, how Moses described it? It's a land of milk and honey and there it is. It's everything for the animals. What's the animals for? For them to make clothing, for them to have food, for them to bring to Jerusalem. In Judah, where God is. Remember, we're in Judah right now. We're in South, where they got Jerusalem. And Hezekiah, what perfect thing to be that here's this proper land. Here's this king. He's got Jerusalem. He's fixing it up. We're going to need a whole bunch of animals, aren't we? Here's the land for them. And dwelt in their rooms because there was there was pasture there for their flock. And some of them, even the sons of Simeon, 500 men went to Mount Seir. That's over in Edom. Having their captain Pataya in charge and Neariah in charge, Rephaniah in charge, Uziel and the sons of Isha. Here's these military men in charge. And they smoked the rest of the Amalekites. And Limanet came one time when Israel was, was coming out of Egypt, heading to the promised land. He came up behind Israel. He started killing off the old, the ones that couldn't keep up with the crowd. The backlash of all the Israelites, he started killing them. And God told Moses, he says, get Joshua. I want you a battle. Moses got up on a mount near her. I forget the other man's name. Moses raised his hands up. Joshua was winning. He put his hand down and Limnick was winning. So they heard and the other man put up Moses' hands, put up two stones, kept his hands up and Joshua fought him. He didn't kill him completely because God said the, the, the cup of the Amalekites is not full yet. But you just showed him my met business and he put a curse upon the Amalekites. And then along comes King Saul. God said to King Saul, through Samuel, I want you to go kill them all. Wipe them out. King Saul wiped them out, but he kept the king. And he kept the best of the cows, the best of the he, sheep, and the best of all things. Samuel comes up and he hears, bah, moo, bah. and Saul said, hey, I've done what the Lord's told me to do. Bah, boo, uh. Samuel's like, what's that I hear? Thought I told you to kill them all. Well, it was the people. They kept the best of everything. That's it. Your kingdom's gone. I'm going to give it to uh, someone else. He gives it to David. And David even tried fighting him. But the cause wasn't to David. David had his own problems. David had his own family problems. David had his own sins problems. But he went in there and fought the Olympicites and didn't wipe them out yet. We're in the past the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah says, let's get right. Let's do this right. Let's get God pleased with us. And at that point, the Olympicites says that smoke the rest of the Olympicites. That escape from who? David and Saul. And I'm going to think the fact is, it says the rest of the Amalekites said, that's it, they're gone. I mean, if you go in the room and say, hey, does somebody eat the rest of the peanuts? I would assume that the peanut bowl would be empty. You can have the rest of the ice cream. That means you're going to finish it, you're going to make it done. Can I have the rest of last night's supper? Yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to take for the fact that you can write this down. As far as the Amalekites, when they showed up in Exodus, when they killed the rear end of the Jewish people, this little tribe of Simeon came up and killed them and took them. They had to go to Edom. Edom was harboring them. Even Edom... Or Esau, Esau's Edom, Edom's Esau. They hated the Jews. The Amalekites hated the Jews. You got this great thing, and they went in there and said, "You're done." 
And in the kites, oh, let's see, Genesis, show you where it came from. I was just reading this today. Genesis. I mean, Joseph. Genesis 36. Look at right now, verse 1. Verse 1, to see who we're reading about. Why did they have to go to Mount Seir? Genesis 36, 1. It says, now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. That's Mount Seir. Okay, and his name is down in uh, verse 12. Now, this is the family of Esau. We're looking at Genesis 36. In verse 12, and Timnah, his concubine, to Eliphaz, Esau's son. Eliphaz is Esau's son, the wife of Eliphaz, Timnah, and she bare to Eliphaz, Esau's son, Elimnech. That is Esau's grandson. So where would Esau's family be hiding now? Study with study with scripture with scripture. Well, God told us in, in 42, verse 42. He told us in Genesis 36, they're hiding out with Esau, with the Edomites. So it looks like, you know, they, they go over there. It looks like they have a mission of God. They have thing, And then the Olympic, uh, yeah, that's kind of hard to say for the third or fourth, sixth time. It looks like the rest of the Olympicites, they're done. God told them. Now, King Saul was supposed to do that. And uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Olympicites is the ones that went to Ziglag and conquered all David's wives and all his family and all his troops' families. I believe. Uh, but that's the Simeonites. Now, Lord willing, next time, we're going to look at Reuben, and we'll see the history of Reuben, the firstborn. Now, why Judah first? Because that's Jesus Christ. Why Simeon next? I don't know. But Reuben, the next child we're going to look at, he's the firstborn, but he lost his blessing because he went unto his father's bed, and I believe that was Bilhah. We'll have to look that up. But that's... Simeon. One family died out. One family did great. And look, they finally did something that God wanted them. Get rid of those Amalekites. Listen, when God says something, it may take time, but it will happen. I will curse them that curse you. There's the end of the curse right there for the Amalekites.